Welcome to our Beer U module on Sour Ales. Sour Ales are a long-standing tradition in Belgium, and they are still brewed there today. While brewers in other parts of the world are creating their own versions of these historic ales. Why not grab a Sour Ale and join us in tasting one while we explore them? Here's a list of Sour Ales that you can refer to when making your choice, but please feel free to bring along your favorite on our journey, no matter which Sour Ale it is. Sour ales seem to be gaining in popularity worldwide as beer drinkers seek out new and more exotic flavors. But sour ales aren't really new. They're a time-honored tradition in Belgium where they've been brewed for centuries. In general, sour ales are different from other beers in several respects. Sour ales often rely on wild yeast and bacteria to ferment them. The sort of microorganisms that other brewers guard against are just the type of thing that brewers of sour ales seek out and promote. Yeast and bacteria that would wreak havoc in most beers are exactly what sour ales rely on to create their characteristic tart flavors. Sour ales can also take months or even years to ferment. The behavior of wild yeast can be difficult to predict and many of the complex flavors found in them take a long time to develop. Sour ales also use hops that are aged and have long lost most of their bitter character. In the world of sour ales, IBU means very little because brewers are using hops more often for their antibacterial qualities rather than for their flavor and aroma. Lastly, sour ales can be very risky business for a brewer. The nature of wild yeast and bacteria makes them a danger to contaminate other, non-sour beers. And given the very lengthy fermentation times that sour ales can have, it can be a long-term risk for the brewer waiting to see if their sour ale is any good once it is finished. Months or years of waiting can be wasted on a bad batch of sour. Sour ales can vary greatly in color, also known as SRM, in alcohol by volume, or ABV, and in bitterness, or IBUs. Sour ales have a very wide range of potential colors, often based on the type and amount of fruit that is added to them. Berliner Weiss beers start out at the low point of the SRM scale, but beers with a lot of darker fruits or those with darker malts, like the Flanders Red and Brown Ales, can get fairly dark in color. ABVs for sour ales are also wide-ranging, but many fall into the lower portion of the ABV scale. A Berliner Weiss can be less than 3% ABV, while a Flanders Brown or Goose can range as high as 8% ABV. And since hops are added to sour ales almost entirely for their antibacterial value, sour ales almost universally score very low on the IBU chart. In fact, since aged hops used in sour ales have lost much of their alpha and beta acid punch, the IBU measurement for sour ales is virtually meaningless, as most sour ales have a virtually undetectable level of bitterness. There are six distinctly different types of sour ales recognized by the BJCP, or Beer Judge Certification Program. Those types are the Berliner Weiss, the Flanders Red Ale, the Flanders Brown Ale, or Oud Brun, the Straight Unblended Lambic, the Goose, and the Fruit Lambic. Berliner Weiss is a sour wheat beer that evolved in the city of Berlin, Germany. Sour beers had been around Berlin for centuries, and it is even said that Napoleon's troops enjoyed the Berliner Weiss after invading the city, dubbing it the Champagne of the North. A strain of bacteria called Lactobacillus delbrucki helps to provide the sharp tang and sourness to this beer. Lactobacillus delbrucki produces lactic acid in the beer, which is responsible for its sourness. In the past, Berliner Weiss beers were one of the very rare beers that did not undergo a boil during the brewing process. This might be the reason that it evolved as a sour beer, since bacteria and other contaminants were not being destroyed in the boil process, as happens in every other beer style. The unboiled wort invited contamination from many sources that could create a sour beer. Today, all brewers boil the wort when making Berliner Weiss, and later add the souring yeast, or Lactobacillus delbrucki, when other yeast is added. Berliner Weiss is typically quite low in alcohol content. Many examples of it range from 3 to 5 percent alcohol by volume. Because of its acidity, Berliner Weiss is often, though not always, consumed with the addition of flavored syrups. Traditional flavors include the green woodruff syrup made from tree bark and raspberry syrup, but many other flavors can be found today. Berliner Weiss is still around, but not easy to find outside of Germany. While it was the most popular alcoholic drink in Berlin a hundred or more years ago, it has faded in popularity since. 
However, in the summer, it is still easy to spot Berliners drinking Berliner Weiss through a straw. As of 2013, the Berliner Kindle Brewery still produces it and serves it with as many as nine different flavored syrups. Flanders is the northern half of Belgium, and the Flanders Red Ale originates in West Flanders. Flanders Red Ales have been brewed in the region for hundreds of years and are our tradition there. Because of their complexity, oak aging, and acidity, these beers are sometimes regarded as the most wine-like of beers. In fact, many wine lovers will enjoy this beer style even if they do not consider themselves beer drinkers. Flanders Red Ales are intensely fruity in character. These flavors are contributed by the dark malts and accentuated by the acidic and tangy character of the beer. This beer is aged in oak for up to two years where it continues to develop character from the wood and from the microorganisms living in it. In at least one brewery, the oak vats called Foders are as much as 150 years old. The finished beer is actually a blend of both young and old beer from various Foders. The microorganisms responsible for the tart character of the Flanders Red Ale include Saccharomyces, Lactobacillus, Britannomyces, and Acetobacter. The Flanders Brown Ale, also known as Oud Brun, is a product of the East Flanders region where it has been a tradition for centuries. Flanders Brown Ales are tart, but also showcase a deep, multi character. These beers are made with a substantial amount of darker malts that contribute a complex, multi character. Unlike the Flanders Red Ales, which are oak aged, the Flanders Brown is aged warm in stainless steel tanks. Several microorganisms contribute to the sour character in this beer, including Saccharomyces, Lactobacillus, and Acetobacter. Another traditional sour ale from Belgium is the Lambic. Lambics are traditionally brewed in and around the Seine River Valley, which surrounds Brussels. This environment in the valley is ideal for producing these beers, as the air contains dozens of different microorganisms that ultimately contribute to the fermentation and character of the beer. The base beer is made with a large amount of unmalted wheat, with wheat being as much as 40% of the total grain used. Aged hops as old as three years are used in making lambics. This is done because the brewer is not interested in getting any bitterness from the hops, most of which is lost after three years. But the hops continue to act as an antiseptic agent in the beer, keeping unwanted bacteria and contaminants out, while allowing the desirable microorganisms and yeast to live. The real magic to lambics is their spontaneous fermentation. Once the base wort is boiled, it is poured into shallow, open containers called cool ships to chill overnight. While this is happening, the open cool ships expose the wort to dozens of airborne yeast and bacteria that will start the wort on its journey to fermentation. Once this has happened, the wort is transferred to wooden barrels where it is aged for as long as several years. Somewhat rarely, the straight lambic beer is served on its own without blending. When this occurs, it is typically younger lambic that has been aged for about six months that is served. The young lambic still contains residual sugar that makes it rather palatable, while the lack of fermentation time leaves it mostly uncarbonated. However, much of the lambic is ultimately aged in barrels much longer for its eventual use in blending to create goose, the next sour ale that we'll discuss. Goose is a blend of aged lambic. A typical goose will be a blend of both young and old lambic ranging from one to three years in age. Blending the various ages of lambic allows the brewer to create a goose that highlights some of the best elements of each of the aged lambics. Unlike the young lambic that is sometimes served straight and uncarbonated, most gooses are quite effervescent, benefiting from the longer fermentation times of the older lambic blended into them. Many inexperienced goose drinkers perceive the goose to be only pungent, sour, or funky in character but a quality goose showcases a wide range of sometimes subtle flavors and is not built on funk alone. Goose does, however, showcase the flavors referred to as wild or horse blanket. Goose has gotten more sweet over the years as tastes have changed and brewers have adapted to a changing consumer base. In fact, some brewers now feature multiple versions of their goose in order to appeal to various drinkers. Quite often, more traditional versions of goose are labeled as oud goose, which translates as old goose. Fruit lambics are goose which has been blended with fruit. This fruit addition started to happen as publicans tried to appeal to a wider range of drinkers and to increase the variety of beers they could offer. Typical fruit additions include cherry, known as creek in Belgium, 
Raspberry, known as Frambois in Belgium, and Muscat grapes, known as Droeven Lambic in Belgium. But there are many more variations available. The fruit is added in various ways. Some brewers use whole fruits, including stems and pits. Other brewers choose to add pieces of fruit or fruit extracts. The original purpose of the fruit was to add character, not really to sweeten the beer, so tart and acidic fruits were typically chosen for fruit lambics. Over the years, some brewers have chosen to sweeten their beer by adding sugars to it, which is not traditional. As with goose, traditional versions of fruit lambics are sometimes referred to as oud or old in the name of the beer. Beers that are sour are high in acid content, which the drinker perceives largely as a sour taste. To create acid and the resulting sour flavors, some not-so-typical yeast and microorganisms are used. Many different strains of yeast and bacteria, over 80 of them in fact, have been identified as souring agents in beer. Wild yeast strains can produce sour flavors. These strains are different than the normal Saccharomyces cerevisiae used in the fermentation process, and there are many different variations of them. In Belgium, they are common to the Seine River Valley and help to create lambic beers in that area. Lactobacillus are a bacteria that produce lactic acid, which creates a sour character. In some beers, lactobacillus are a common reason for spoilage and unintentional sour flavors. Lactobacillus are also responsible for making sourdough bread sour. Britannomyces, or Brett for short, is a yeast that produces the so-called funk or barnyard flavor in sour beers. Brett is common in wine and is often considered to have a positive influence on its flavor at low or medium levels. In both beer and wine, Brett can contribute greatly to the complexity of flavor. Acetobacter is the bacteria used to produce vinegar and can create a vinegary off flavor in some beers by creating acetic acid. For Flemish sour ales, it acidifies the beer intentionally. Pediococcus is a bacteria that produces lactic acid to make beer sour. It also makes sauerkraut out of cabbage. When talking about sour ales, especially those from Belgium, some phrases get used a lot to describe the character of these beers. Phrases like wild, barnyard, and horse blanket are applied to them in an attempt to describe the unusual flavors associated with them. These phrases can be intimidating to some drinkers. These flavors are provided by microorganisms and are common in the spontaneously fermented lambics and goose and in other beers that are fermented with Britannomyces or Brett. It is typically Brett that is responsible for the wild character, and many brewers prize it for that reason, while many drinkers appreciate those beers containing this character as among the finest in the world. These terms are not meant to describe the beer as sour. In fact, the flavors they describe stand quite apart from sour flavors and can be present even in very bitter beers. Nobody wants to drink a beer that tastes like horse blanket, but I urge you to not let the term scare you away from drinking some amazing beers. Congratulations, you've finished the module. Hopefully you have a few minutes to take the optional quiz that is coming up. Like I said, it's optional, but if you are taking a beer you curriculum and need to get credit for this module, you'll have to take the quiz and get at least 70% of the answers correct in order to show this module is complete. Good luck.